one meal a day works. It works really, really, really well, which is why people do it. But it comes with some inherent risks, which is why I usually advise people don't do it for long. However, that's not going to stop people because it works. So people are going to do it whether there are risks or not. So with that being said, how do you craft the perfect one meal a day meal that gets you everything that you need? You see, the inherent risks that come along with one meal a day are gonna be in this order. One, severe caloric restriction. Okay, you're not getting enough calories because you're eating one meal a day and eventually you're shrinking your metabolic rate down and down and down until it's harder and harder and harder to lose weight and that's a big problem, so we need to correct that. The second risk is going to be nutrient deficiencies. Because you're only eating one meal a day, you're lacking the diversity that you might need. So maybe you're missing out on things. Okay, and the third issue is the opposite. It's overnutrition, which isn't just overeating. It's getting so much in the way of things that your body can't really assimilate it. Too much protein, it can't assimilate. Too much of one thing, and it makes it harder to utilize it. So without further ado, what do you eat after your one meal a day fast is over. Okay, well, let's break this down. So what I recommend is doing some form of steak, eggs, olive oil, maybe some avocado, some broccoli, some garlic, and some carrots. That's the staple, and then we have additional add-ons. Hear me out on this. We're gonna break down why, and we're gonna break down some amounts. What is important to note with one meal a day is that you are probably better off following keto along with one meal a day. Now, before you shut off this video because you think I'm a keto zealot, hear me out on this. Because you're already fasting for 23-ish hours with one meal a day, you're already producing ketones. So you might as well just stay in ketosis rather than bumping yourself out by having carbohydrates during your one meal a day. Additionally, you're gonna allow yourself to have more caloric density Carbs do not have a lot of caloric density, which means you fill up precious space within your stomach, making it so that you're running the risk of reducing calories too much. Remember, one of the greatest responsibilities that you have with one meal a day fasting is getting enough calories. But now that I've said that, you take it or leave it. Okay, so what I would usually recommend is seven to eight ounces, about 200 grams or so, of a moderately fatty cut of beef. I usually recommend something like a New York. I think a ribeye might be a little too fatty. We don't wanna to go too overboard on the saturated fat because we wanna leave room for some of the other fats, okay? So go for like, yeah, maybe a 500 calorie cut of New York steak. The reason we're going for this, we got about 30-ish grams of fat with that, which is gonna be great. About half of which is coming from saturated fat, which we're gonna need for myelination, we're gonna need for various things, but it's not over the top. Yes, there are still monounsaturated fats in steak as well. Okay, now steak is also going to have a lot of zinc. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but when you're doing a longer fast and you're doing them back to back to back to back, like you are with OMAD, you run the risk of serious immunosuppression. Your immune system can become suppressed because that's a lot of stress on the body. So zinc is very important for the immune system. So we wanna focus on getting foods that are rich in zinc. Steak is going to be one of those. Additionally, you've got the heme iron, which is very, very good for obviously uh, oxygenation of the blood, for hemoglobin, for red blood cells. I put a link down below if you wanna try some good grass-fed, grass-finished beef from ButcherBox. Talk about them all the time. That is a really tremendous source. Their rib highs are like literally the most succulent, best tasting ribeyes that I've had in a long, long time. Their fillets are super tender. My wife and I are both big fillet people, but they don't just have steaks. They have a bunch of other stuff. They have scallops, they have seafood options, they have chicken, they have pork, they have sausage, they have bacon, they have breakfast sausage. It's unreal and it gets delivered right to your doorstep. So that link down below gets you a special discount. Plus they're still running their promo for free ground beef for life if you wanna check them out. So that link down below in the description for ButcherBox Definitely recommend. Also, you can get the specific cuts that I get and check out my custom boxes as well. So check that link out. Then we wanna have eggs. Now with eggs, you can have as many as you really want to up to about eight. I think over eight, you start running into some assimilation issues and that's pretty high fat in conjunction with a high fat steak. So with the eggs, very, very abundant mineral and nutrient profile. One of the most nutrient rich foods you could eat 
Now, personally, I'd probably do about three or four for my size is 180 pounds. Okay, you've also got choline. So you're gonna support the brain, neurotransmitter, the precursor to acetylcholine. Additionally, it can help improve your cholesterol levels, help improve that HDL level. We don't wanna crash your cholesterol levels and crash your hormone levels by fasting so much, which is very much a real thing. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take four or so tablespoons of olive oil, good quality olive oil, which is what is called a monounsaturated fat. A monounsaturated fat is a fat that is stable, so you could use it to sear the steak for a moment, but it is not saturated, not all the way saturated. It's got one bond that is available. We want to have this monounsaturated fat because it's going to A, provide an additional fat source that makes it so that the saturated fat isn't the majority of the fats you're consuming. I want your saturated fat to end up being about 20 to 30% of your total fat content. So the more olive oil or avocado oil or macadamia nut oil that we can add into the mix, the better. So you're getting the monounsaturated fats, which improve the insulin sensitivity, which you're already getting from fasting. So let's fuel that fire more. Also high antioxidant compounds and high anti-inflammatory effects. So you can counteract the oxidation that occurs from having a large bolus of nutrients coming in at one time. Now, olive oil is a great one. Macadamia nut oil is a great one. What you wanna do is you wanna heat it up to a good temperature, not overly heated, and you wanna sear your steak for just a few seconds each side on it. You might be thinking, I thought we weren't supposed to cook in olive oil. We're not cooking in it long-term, we're searing and we're not reaching this crazy 500 degree heat. We're just searing and then you take the rest of that olive oil and drizzle it over some garlic, some carrots, some broccoli. You can even cook the garlic in the rest of that oil and still get the benefits which we're gonna talk about because I think garlic is pretty important during OMAD. So the garlic, the carrots, and the broccoli, why these veggies specifically? Granted, you can have some slack with this, but garlic is unique because garlic, you're getting rich prebiotic effects. Okay, so you're helping to feed the gut bacteria in a way that is very potent and very strong. But garlic, because of the allicin and some of the other compounds that are in it, it's very antimicrobial and it seems to be quite antibacterial and really good for the immune system. Then the carrots are there simply because of the antioxidant profile of carrots. Sure, there's some carbs, but trust me, it's not gonna be a problem if you're just having maybe a half a cup or so. The carotenoids like lutein and zeaxanthin, really good for the eyes, but also one of the only plant sources that you're gonna get a powerful amount of carotenoids in outside of some of these other meat sources. And then broccoli is there for good reason because broccoli contains the sulforaphane. Now, I'm not just rattling off random components and benefits of nutrients. Like I really did try to think what would work in tandem with OMAD fasting. Sulforaphane is very good to help the liver deal with nutrients, help potential detoxification mechanisms within the body, the filtration. So that's why I lean into broccoli. If you can't do broccoli, try Brussels sprouts. If you can't do Brussels sprouts, next in line is going to be bok choy. If you can't do bok choy, next in line is going to be cauliflower. Okay, so now we've covered the proteins, the fats, the veggies. You can end it right here if you want. If you're not adding carbohydrates into the mix, no need to really worry about it. However, if you are adding carbs, this is when you'd wanna add them in, if you have room in your stomach. And what I would lean into is sweet potatoes more than anything. 10% of the carbs in a sweet potato are resistant starches, which means they're going to feed the gut, they're going to feed the microbiome, but there's also a rich amount of antioxidants and once again, some carotenoids as well as some other compounds that are very, very good for neutralizing the free radicals that are associated with carbohydrate metabolism in the first place. Okay, so sweet potato, I would usually say maybe five or six ounces of it, don't go overboard. And then as far as a fruit is concerned, I would recommend going with lower glycemic things like strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries. Raspberries probably being the best bet for you. However, if you find that you have trouble sleeping with OMAD, which is a common thing because you're fasting so much and adrenaline levels are high, there's some interesting studies that demonstrate that having some kiwi can help you sleep. So maybe having some kiwi along with your meal might help you sleep a couple hours before bed. Now here's what's cool about OMAD is you can have an appetizer, you can have a main course, and you can have a dessert. You're just eating them in that order in one meal. It doesn't count as three meals. So if you still have room and you wanna get a little bit more, I would recommend doing a dessert as maybe four or five ounces of unsweetened, probably low fat or even non-fat Greek yogurt, just to get some more protein in. 
and maybe add some berries and a little bit of stevia and monk fruit to that yogurt. That way you're getting a probiotic effect, you're getting some of the myristic acid, so some of the fats if it's gonna be a, a moderate fat Greek yogurt, and you're getting the benefits of the polyphenols from the berries. So with that, you can close up shop, roll into the next day, and be pretty confident that you've got enough nutrition in and enough calories in. And if you kept the carbs out of the equation, even if you had fruit, you can probably still maintain a ketogenic state. I'm gonna to touch really quick on potential supplementation if you wanted to add supplements in to kind of benefit this. You don't have to do this, but I would recommend four to 500 milligrams of magnesium, if you can, in the form of dimagnesium malate or glycinate to help you sleep. I would recommend a good probiotic when you're doing OMAD, just simply because you just wanna do what you can to support the gut. That way you're kind of like, all this food at least has a place to really work with in your gut. I would recommend cod liver oil. That way you're getting omega-3s in, especially if you can't eat salmon or anything like that, but you're also getting bioavailable retinol A and vitamin D from cod liver oil. I would recommend coenzyme Q10, CoQ10, so you can help out with that electron transport chain and help energy manufacturing throughout this process as well. It makes you more efficient at fasting. And optional ones, again, maybe two to five grams of creatine to help you out with strength so that you can keep on kind of having this strength and muscle volume and water retention in the intracellular uh, fiber in the tissue. So two to five grams of creatine, you can have that anytime during your fast, it's not gonna break it. And if you're having gut issues or immune system issues, five grams of glutamine might not be a bad idea as well. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.